When it comes to over-the-top role-playing games, it's hard to beat the bonkers worlds and stories I've come to expect from the Xenoblade Chronicles saga. And Xenoblade Chronicles 3 retains that sense of having your mind blown as you visit absurd location after absurd location with a group of great characters at your side. At the same time, massive improvements have been made to combat, quest design, and the RPG sandbox as a whole. Of course, while this third entry evolves in some key areas that make the epic journey more consistently fun than the two mainline games that came before it, it also repeats some of the same mistakes, including sloppy writing, Don't get on your high horse. weak bosses, and graphics that often leave something to be desired. Even so, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 and its impressive, if convoluted, story is already competing for the spot as my favorite iteration of this beloved series. Everything about the war-torn world of Ionios, where Xenoblade Chronicles 3 takes place, is completely foreign. From the 10-year lifespans the world's pod-grown residents live, to the constant war to power up flame clocks that each faction draws life from, to the Offseers, who play flutes to release the dead as sprites of light. It's all the stuff of fever dreams. All of these puzzling elements unravel over the course of the extensive adventure. And by extensive, I mean about 150 hours. Being a part of that journey is uniquely satisfying, in a way only Monolith Soft seems capable of pulling off. But while the story and world are delightfully weird, they aren't always effectively used, especially when it comes to the extremely hit-or-miss writing that has characters retreading the same developments over and over again and beating you over the head with the major themes and ideas. Oftentimes, three lengthy cutscenes are used to accomplish what might have just as well been covered with a single line of dialogue. I hope I'll be able to get through to her. Add in some severe pacing problems like one section that has you go undercover to perform menial tasks and another that has you trotting across the world to collect pieces of metal, all that padding meant I often felt like my time wasn't being respected. The good news is that even when the story drags a bit, the characters never stop shining brightly, with very few exceptions. Whether you're hanging out with the brash meathead Lands and his simple charms, or spending time with the studious bookworm Tyon, it was really hard for me to not grow to love the ragtag band of misfits and ne'er-do-wells that comprise your party. Sure, they aren't the most original characters, I've definitely seen their like in half a hundred games and shows before, but after so many hours with these lovable scamps, I've come to regard them all as my chosen family. That's especially true when each character is given so much time in the limelight, Every party member gets extensive personal histories and fully voice acted optional side quests that flesh out their backstories and provide additional color. Of course, it wouldn't be Xenoblade without bizarre otherworldly locations to adventure in, and the environments in this one are suitably odd. One part of the trek takes place inside of a giant discarded sword, and this part leads you along the branches of a massive tree. And that's just the beginning. Exploring as you unravel the mysteries of Ionios adds to the unpredictability and weirdness of the world in a really awesome way. It's unfortunate though that they rarely look pretty due to the Nintendo Switch being pushed to its absolute limits by such an ambitious voyage. I played on my OLED model and switch between docked and mobile mode regularly, but no matter what, textures are often low res, there's frequent pop in and out, and oftentimes I just couldn't help but feel like the whole world was a bit blurry. The good news is that I quickly got used to these visual shortcomings, and once I accepted it for what it was, it only rarely dampened my enjoyment. Cutscenes at least are crisp, and the frame rate runs at a rock solid 30, even when dozens of things are happening on screen at the same time. But it's still sort of disappointing to see such obvious hardware limitations in an adventure that reaches for the stars in so many other areas. If you were annoyed by the fetch quests from previous Xenoblade games, you can look forward to the fact that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 massively improves things in this regard by making many optional quests actually feel substantial by introducing new characters and offering some story snippets that make your effort worth the trouble. In my completionist playthrough, I helped a Napon and a human put aside their differences across a series of missions, became best friends with a robot, and helped various settlements resolve their disputes, among other things. That said, there are still plenty of missions that feel very much like filler, and have you running around collecting berries and rocks or some such nonsense, and those are as gut-wrenchingly unpleasant to do as they've ever been, though at least now you aren't bombarded by them every five minutes, and it's clear which missions are the important ones and which are throwaways. 
Similarly, numerous improvements have been made to the combat system that make it feel far less repetitive and more engaging than its predecessors. While the foundation of combining auto attacks, superpowered arts, and attack combos remains largely intact, a plethora of options have been added that successfully staves off stagnation for over 100 hours. And that's no small feat. It's accomplished with, among other things, six playable characters plus a guest NPC that can be swapped out, new transformations that combine two characters into their Ouroboros form, making them almost impossible to take down for a limited period of time, and returning chain attacks, which let you deal a ton of damage by playing a simple minigame. There's also an awesome new mechanic that lets characters trade classes with one another and with guest NPCs that have entirely different skill sets. In fact, doing so is incredibly important to progression, because you gain new abilities by mastering the classes of your fellow party members. You might become an awesome healer with a laser gun, or a soul-stealing boxer who takes abilities from powerful creatures you fell. Playing around with all the classes not only serves an addictive loop that kept me busy throughout the adventure, but also helps break up some of the monotony we had to slog through in prior iterations of the combat system that tethered you to a single class and lacked variety. The drawback here is that with so many new mechanics and all the complexity of everything Xenoblade Chronicles 3 juggles, I was quite frequently interrupted to read through tutorial flashcards like I was studying for the LSAT. Boss fights are also a bit underwhelming, as you fight a lot of the same class of boss enemies. It really likes throwing big purple humanoid demon creatures at you, for example, which gets quite old pretty fast. It's also a fan of making you fight the same boss twice in a row, with cutscenes serving as bookends between each encounter. And don't even get me started on the numerous times you defeat a boss only to immediately enter a cutscene wherein the boss defeats you. I get that it's a very common cliché in JRPGs, but Xenoblade Chronicles 3 hits you with this annoying trope a lot. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is another excellent JRPG, with great characters and a unique world that remains entertaining, even after the over 150 hours it took to complete it. For the first time in the series, side quests are actually fun to do, and the class swapping and interlink Ouroboros mechanics keep the revised combat system feeling fresh. Plus, the story is worth seeing through to the end, even though it's overwritten and takes some meandering detours. At the same time, there are a fair amount of odd game design choices, like its annoying and repetitive combat voice lines. That was over way too soon! Hear that, Noah? Lance wants something a bit meatier and uninteresting cookie-cutter boss fights. And it is unfortunate that Ionios' beauty seems held back by the Switch's hardware. But none of that should deter you from going all-in on another fantastic odyssey in a series that is worthy of a massive amount of your time. For more, check out our reviews of Live Alive and Forza Horizon 5's Hot Wheels expansion. For everything else, stick with IGN. You are? You're supposed to be following me!